Good evening. We are going to start our investigation into the book of Revelation and chapter 1 starts off the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now revelation is a word from the Greek which it basically means an uncovering, something is going to be revealed. That's what Jesus is sending this message to the Apostle John in aid of. He sends it, Jesus does, by his angel unto John the Apostle. And there's an urgency in his message. And an unusual feature of that message is that it is sign he signified it. That is to be delivered by signs and symbols. That will then mean that the ensuing work that comes will then need interpretation. And so John goes on in the second verse of the first chapter, saying, Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. At the age then of over 90 years, the visions which the Apostle John saw while he was in prison in the Isle of Patmos exceeded his faith and in approximately AD 96, it would have been a source of great encouragement to him. And the third verse says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. This shows the basis of the life which Jesus would have for his disciples. In other words, that those words of Scripture should be their guide and at hand all the time and that people interested in what he is saying would be therefore interested also in interpreting what the book of Revelation signifies which is not always easy and we see that thinking about people who would be following him down through many ages in front of him it is interspersed with sequences of major events to take place during that promised time until the Lord Jesus returns to the earth again. And there are in fact seven encouraging pictures of the future kingdom. And in the first chapter, verse 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, that's he who has gone to heaven, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And in the 11th verse, we read, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, Jesus says to John, write in a book. So he wanted those words to be preserved. And he was told to send it to the seven ecclesias or churches which are in Asia. So this is something which Jesus wants to be widely signified and widely portrayed and ultimately open to everybody in the whole world. Now, on hearing this voice behind him, John turns, and what does he see? He sees a seven golden, branched golden candlestick, and a figure of one like the Son of Man, whose head and hairs were white like wool, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto brass, and his voice as the sound of many waters. This is this description that Jesus is and that John is finding out. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. It must have been an awesome sight that the Apostle John saw. It had hair white as snow, eyes like a flame of fire. The meanings of some of these symbols we see immediately the meaning behind this symbolic language because plainly just to read these things as they stand doesn't make an awful lot of sense to us. And Jesus in the 19th verse tells John, write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. And we notice there's a sort of section in there. John is told to write down the things which are, which is the ecclesias, the things which he has seen, which is these wonderful visions and the things that shall f follow thereafter. In other words, things that are going to happen, which shall be hereafter, events to take place after John's day and until the return of Jesus Christ. 
Now, in the 20th verse, Jesus then gives a, a key, as it were, to what some of these signs are. John writes down, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlestick. And Jesus says, Now those seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, or the arranging brethren. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches, radiating a light of truth. And so this mystery, which we see first of all, it means a secret. And the verse tells us that with knowledge, that secret is undone. And that these angels, which are teachers in the ecclesial light stands, and we would expect a, a church or an ecclesia to be a light stand of truth. And in the second chapter, verse 1, we get the first of the letter. We, he wanted to send this letter to seven churches, and the first one is the, is the letter of Ephesus. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. This is the first of similar message to each of the ecclesias in Asia. The star is the teacher of the ecclesia in Ephesus. Each word that Jesus says is significant. It's held in his right hand. Now that shows how important the work, and he's walking in the midst of the candlestick, and that gives the idea of a constant surveillance and attention being paid by the Lord to what is happening in that ecclesia. Now we ask ourselves, what would be the purpose of going to such lengths to send such a communication? It was to tell them how they were doing, and to give them, as we would say today, feedback on what Jesus wanted them to do and how they were dealing with the knowledge which Jesus had given them. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written. That's what Jesus is looking to see how they're getting on with us. Jesus tells them, that's the ecclesia at Ephesus, that as a result of his walking among them, that he has observed that they show certain things. He's observed that in his looking at them. They show patience with others, which he says is wholly good. But on the other hand, they have separated from those who would be with them, who are not really genuine, called in the text Nicolaitans. But in addition to that, there was a lack, so Jesus says, of a most important thing. In the fourth verse, the second chapter, Jesus says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And he goes on in the fifth verse, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now this is a most significant thing. We see how intensely and observationally Jesus is looking at this ecclesia and it shows us the high standard of living which Jesus is looking for. Carrying out works, faithful works, being active for the Lord. And the letter to Ephesus concludes with an appeal which is extremely strong and in fact occurs in each of the seven churches ecclesias to which he writes. And it's in the seventh verse, he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It's addressed to those individual members of the ecclesias, and it's putting the responsibility on them. And he says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And of course that reminds us of the Garden of Eden and that paradise which man was barred from. But Jesus is saying that he will restore its access to those who overcome. And what is overcoming? It means to have the victory over. There's things that they've got to get victory over in order to please Jesus. And we find that letters to the remaining four ecclesias in this chapter follow the same principles. In each case, their reward is based on individual effort of overcoming, that is being victorious over the world and over themselves, such that his love prevails. 